am Lakshmi Harish. I am a finance leader at Amazon. I'm a dancer and founding member of Shakti, a platform for professional women to inspire, empower, and educate each other through shared experiences and mentoring. I'm a mother of two young kids. I have varied interests and I find it challenging to find time and energy for it all. Many a time I ignore spending time on things that I truly like because other commitments take over. And it gets me thinking, can women truly have it all? How can women effectively prioritize the multiple things in their life? There should be a better way to do this. And that brings us to today's Shakti Real Talk, juggling priorities in a modern woman's life. We have two amazing panelists today who have probably cracked the code to this dilemma. I welcome Shari Mukha and Aparna Menon. Uh, a few quick words about Shari and Aparna. Shari is a true global citizen, having lived in England, UK, India, Hong Kong, and now the US. She has over 25 years of experience in fashion and home furnishing, and is currently the VP of product development and production at Coxicle, a role that requires her to travel a lot. She loves Kathak dance, gym, and yoga. She is married with two daughters. Welcome, Shari. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, and Aparna. Aparna is a director of Capital One Bank. She wears many hats. Founding member of the first print Malayali magazine and a Malayali FM radio in the US. Diversity and inclusion champion at work actor in a few short films, including a movie that premiered on Amazon Prime, Kathak dancer, votive director in the local community organization, and married with two young boys. Wow, there's a lot packed in there. Let's dive in. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, Shari. I have two kids, a busy work life, and I struggle to do it all. What are the things that competes for your attention day to day? And how do you find the time and energy to do it? Well, I think that everything competes, right? So the work, family, my personal interests, and then also let's not forget our friends, our friends and family. They are also looking for our time. So honestly, the real way that I found is that I have to be realistic. Do I have to do everything in 24 hours? Does every single thing have to have a role in my life in that 24 hour period? And the answer to that is, in my, at least in my life, is no. I can juggle things around. So, you know, I can prioritize. It is up to me to set the boundaries for my day and my life. Now, I'm a, perhaps a little more fortunate. My children are a little older. They are 16 and 24 years old. So they're not needing me on the same level as they did when they were perhaps, you know, younger, like maybe two and, and six years old. Of course, they still need me. But the thing is, I have to really uh, designate things to do on certain days. So I block things in my calendar like I do my work commitments. So, for example, on certain days, I go to yoga class. It is put into my calendar. On certain days, I go for gym. It's put into my calendar. You know, family time. I know it sounds a little odd, but I put that in my calendar as well. That way, if it's in the schedule, it's very difficult for it to be disrupted by other things. And this kind of discipline or rigor, if you like, is quite important. And I also feel that there is a sense of, you have to be, it's not selfish, but you have to give some self-care to yourself. Because if you allow the day or the events or the demands to overrun you, at the end of the day, you're exhausted. And then who are you helping? You're not helping yourself, your friends, your family, your children, or your job. Got it. So it's more of scheduling your priorities in so that you don't miss them and you yes. devote the time required to it. Yes. And, yeah, and saying what is a priority on that day? Everything is not a priority on that day. Aparita, what would you like to say to that? I mean, that, that's a very textbook on the point answer, Sherry, and most women who juggle priorities, they fully agree with that, right? It's the concept of you have to put your own mask first 
if you are in an airplane crisis before you start helping someone else. And that is something we all have to live to the core. So I have nothing more to add what Sherry said, but I'd love to bring a different point of view to it, which is we all speak from our point of privilege, right? Sherry is able to put appointments on her calendar and stick to it. So am I, I prioritize and there is no other way any woman or for that matter, man can run multiple things without prioritizing. But the challenge that we sometimes don't realize is there are many women out there who don't have the luxury of owning their own calendars. Someone else put the appointments for them. You know, they don't have the luxury or the lack of constraints to plan what they want to do in their lives. So my empathy and my heart always goes out to those who would love to do these multitasking, who would love to do this um, prioritization of different events in their day-to-day -day life, but are unable to do so because someone else is setting their priorities or setting their everyday calendar. And as a woman, I also try to, where possible, reach out my hand and ask, is there anything I can do to help, right? Um, we are all at a place of privilege. We are lucky enough to have that empowered life for ourselves, very supportive family, uh, kids who are understanding, uh, spouses or family members who are with us, who support us, all that is well and great and uh, working fine for us. But there are so many out there who just can't afford that luxury. So whenever possible, I try to ask, is there anything I can do to help? And as a society, I feel we do require much better support system for our women, for the sisters out there, because otherwise there are many who are just not able to realize their dreams uh, and get their everyday done the way they would like it to be. Mm -hmm. So this is true. And I've seen this with people who are more junior in their career. And you're quite right. They don't have as much control over their calendar as perhaps I do. And I've even heard some situations where people have, especially during the last year, mm -hmm. that they have been working until one, two in the morning. And I'm thinking to myself, wait, but I know they have young children. Like we're talking like preschool children. And then I'm wondering, how is their supervisor not connecting the dots that this lady has preschool children and working till one and two in the morning? And when I, when I ask the lady in question, she's like, well, he, he just told me I had to do it, so I did it. And it was such a surprise to me that she hadn't felt that she had a platform to say, that doesn't work for me. I have two children of preschool age. And you're quite right, it needs more support through the system in order to let people have the opportunity to say, hey, that doesn't work, I can do it this way without feeling that they risk being penalized. Yeah, and as um, leaders of the organization, the higher we go up, we all have a responsibility to show by example. And this is something my workplace is really good at where they um, ask the senior leaders to just go on vacation, put time on your calendar that says, this is my time to go take a walk outside. I'm doing that. And when the senior leaders do that, the rest of them would feel more of a permission to go ahead and do that, right? Snow days. So when the snow day comes, the senior most member of a company would say, listen, I'm going to go out and do some sledding with my kids. Even though it's not a day off because of the snow day, pre-pandemic, don't feel like you have to sit in front of a Zoom all day. Go play with your kids because it happens only once once during that season to so just go have fun. So we all have the responsibility to set example by our own actions to show that, yep, I have an activity at my kid's school, I am taking a break here. So you should also feel permission to do the same. Mm. Wow, that's great. Very valid thoughts. It's more about the more we talk about it and the more we show from our own actions through our own actions, that makes an impact. But mm -hmm. not talking about it, it, it's just not going to help anyone except mm -hmm. perhaps a privileged few. Yeah. And Aparna, you had a very interesting point in saying that you know a lot of women do not have the freedom to choose their own calendar, maybe because of the position in their career or maybe because of situation at home. Many a times it's also you know, how society expects women to prioritize their family and children over everything else, which forces them to choose you know, a certain way of leading their life, which they may not have done otherwise. Uh, have you faced any such pressures? And if so, how have you overcome that? Yeah, I mean, when we were chatting earlier, Lakshmi, you had mentioned about this notion of 
the woman or the mother being the ever sacrificing, the ever loving, the ever giving, the ever kind incarnation of God uh, herself, right? As a marketer, I feel like that's one of the best lies that have been put out there for centuries <laughs> and has done a disservice to all the women. I'm sure uh, it was probably propagated by some clever male out there and all the women who felt trapped to it had to repeat that again and again, just so that they can feel good about themselves that I'm doing all of this, but at the end of the day, I'm a mom. Sacrificing is my job. I do this because that's what all moms do and that's how we get that halo around our head or whatnot. That's a biggest marketing ploy, in my opinion. Uh, personally, did I have that tough choice of choose one versus the other? To be honest, no. I've been one of the lucky few who grew up with extreme um, freedom, even as a child, and actually knows me from my college days. So I, I had the kind of freedom where even boys sometimes question me as to even we have to get back at home by a certain time. How come your parents have no time limit for you? How do you get this much freedom? So I'm very fortunate to have had very progressive parents. Um, after getting married and coming to the US, I did see a change in social expectations though. And I give some personal example. Um, newly married, hanging out with young couples uh, in our community, you know, something I noticed was in the early days when everyone is newly married, the husband, wife, everyone hangs out together, you have dinner, go out something, movies, it was just a carefree lifestyle, perfect. And then each one of my friends started having babies. Now as babies came, the responsibilities increased and then interesting dynamics uh, I observed and that was that we would all assemble in one house. It's of course the job of the women to prepare the dinner and they would go through the trouble of you know, serving everyone. At the end of the day, they have to feed the kids, they have to put all the dishes, um, do all the cleaning. And by then the guys would be like, well, we're gonna just go out and hang at the club or we're just gonna take for, go for a walk and they would just leave and have all the you know, guys fun stuff and go away to have their own party or whatever. And the rest of the women are still stuck at home with the kids. And this uh, pattern repeated again and again. And that's when I realized that the social expectations of women, they cook, they clean, they stay home with the kids, while the guys get to go out, hang out, do their own thing, that became more and more prominent. Until that phase, I've never really realized that, oh, there is a pattern evolving here. What is going on? I have to challenge this. I have to question this. Now, obviously, I challenged question and things moved on. Uh, but it was very interesting to see that even among the younger, relatively modern generation that I think I belong in, those social stereotypes kicked in without anyone really dictating it. It automatically kicked in because once you have kids, once you have household responsibilities, it just fell into the women's lap and not that many women even questioned it which was more appalling to me, right? And um, I was probably not the most uh, well-liked person in the group because I challenged it too, more, too much than I probably should have. But the fact that it just happened to all of us, even though we are very well-educated, everyone financially independent, um, young modern families, it was happening to us. We were textbook examples of that gender stereotyping within the families. So it happens to the best of us. The point is to be aware of it to challenge it when you have to, and then do it respectfully uh, to in, in a fashion that it's ultimately a win-win for everyone. You know, a very relevant part, especially, you know, this is March and the theme is choose to challenge and definitely something that we should be challenging as we some, see some of these things and we turn probably a blind eye to it or we don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. Abdullah. Shari, anything that you had faced or did you have any similar experience? How well, most definitely. I mean, I was raised a little differently to Apanna. I was raised to sort of, my mom's expectation for me and my sister was to finish high school, take a job, get married and have children, buy a house near to her if possible, and raise the children. And uh, that was kind of how we were brought up to, to think. Uh, but that happened to be, of course, in the 80s. And during that era, it was really the, the beginning of the power woman, the career woman. So I was constantly having two sort of uh, opposing views, one on each shoulder. And I was very fascinated by this concept of the career woman. 
much to my mom's, uh, she was not happy. Just let's be honest, she wasn't happy. And I chose that path and it was quite a battle and resulted in many, many uh, unfortunate conversations with my mom um, about my choices and how she felt that as a working mother, I was neglecting my children. Um, I was neglecting my family. You know, I was letting down the family. Um, and a lot of um, pressure from, the, from inside my family, which you, know, you, you sort of imagine you might get pressure from outside, but to have it from within your own family is actually, uh, it, it, it's more hard, it's harder to deal with when it's coming from your own family. But I have always believed that we should do what we want. And I've raised my daughters to think that they should do, they should do what they want as well. And I agree with Apana, you have to challenge it but in a respectful manner, because creating an argument and creating turmoil, particularly within a family unit, is not gonna benefit anyone. Um, so my solution to it has always been, you know, fair is fair. If the boys can go out on one night, great. Then we have girls night on another night and things like that. And just kind of balance things out a little bit. In my family, we share the responsibilities. I absolutely insist whomsoever cooks does not clean. I cannot tell you how many times I've left the kitchen unclean for two, three days, even though it kills me inside. <laughs> but I do it to make a point because eventually there'll be no more plates and pots, right? They'll all be dirty. And then what? How are we going to eat? So it's just a matter of unfortunately living through these very uncomfortable periods of time until your message gets instilled that, okay, this is a modern family unit. Everyone has to pull their weight. And then even in the workforce, you know, I, I'm, because in engineering, it's still, unfortunately, a very male dominated area. So I'll be on business trips, you know, overseas with a group of men, and we'll be talking about family and kids like, you, like we all do. And then they'll look at me and they say, oh, you must miss your children. And I'll be like, well, don't you miss yours? Like, <laughs> is, it only, is it only a woman that's going to miss her children? Is, the father not missing theirs also so it's just these subtle but definitely present comments and situations that you find yourself in and you really just have to be stronger than all of that and push through for what you know is right and i love that aspect of question that often comes to women not to men and the one i absolutely hate is the question of work-life balance which only gets asked to women right i mean to be honest in some ways we are having this conversation about women because maybe there is some truth at some level that the question of work-life balance always comes to women and uh, i had this almost epiphany when i was talking to one of my bosses a very strong female leader at that time when she talked to me about her career um, path how she travels so there were years in her career where she worked 80, 90 hours. She never even saw her kids. But then there was a point where she realized that, you know what, I need to take a break. I'm going to completely pull back. And for the next three, four, six months, she stayed with stayed home. I think she left one job and took up another after a few months. She was completely home, stayed with them and stayed with them and enjoyed the time. And then she got back on work and got into it with them again. And that made me realize that we always talk about work-life balance as if we are some circus artists who are trying to balance ourselves on a trapeze at any given point in time, right? You have to be always balanced. God forbid the balance flips even for a moment, you topple down. That's not the case. To me, the work-life balance happens over a large time continuum, right? When you look at a period of one year, maybe a few years or a few months, over a period of time, you have to ensure there is reasonable balance in your work life and in your family life. But there may be days when work is your only priority, and maybe days when your kids are your only priority, your family is your only priority, and maybe days your friends are your priority, and so on. But it doesn't have to be every single day going back to your you know, introductory point, Sherry. Like you decide each day what you're going to do. But it's almost like a beautiful painting, right? You don't paint the entire painting red. You have multiple colors, you know, and different colors goes to different spots. But at the end of the day, it creates a beautiful picture. So over a period of time, there should be balance, agreed. But it doesn't mean you have to be balanced every single day. And where women set themselves up for failure is they try to bring that perfection every single day. If you're trying to put all of the paints at the one spot every single day, that picture is probably going to look dirty. Mm -hmm. So in my personal life, 
my house is never really clean. It's usually messy. You know, once in every three weeks, I pay someone to come and clean it. And that's it. That's fine. And I don't fancy a very picture perfect house at all, all, all times. I don't cook every day. When I do, I do in batches. And that's fine. I'm not going to spend more time in the kitchen than I need to. So my days are not perfect every single day, but over a period of time, I get done everything I want. Lovely image, Aparna, I, I know of the picture. And it resonates with me as well. So I have a two-year-old and you know, before he turned two, I completely neglected my dance classes for the last two years. But now I am at a stage where I know I can spend more time to it, devote more attention to it. And that's my balance today, which may not have been the balance two years back. Yes. Uh, so that's a very relevant point uh, to for women to note that you don't have to be perfect every single day. It's all about how do you find that balance, which is satisfying to you, fulfills you over a period of time. Yeah, love it. And it's not a circus. It's never a circus. It's more of a painting. <laughs> Shari, uh, you know, we have talked about you know, how do you prioritize and schedule the priorities in your life. You've talked about not being perfect all the time and finding the balance by respectfully discussing with your uh, you know, near and dear on how balance can work for you, how the priorities in a play in your life. Any other thoughts or comments that you feel we should be talking about in terms of how women don't have the nagging thing at the back of their head that, hey, am I doing everything I can? But I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? What is that everything that we're supposed to be doing? Um, and I think that that's a bit of a myth. You know, I mean, in, in my mind, as long as you know, the bills are paid, food is on the table, whatever food it might be, you know, people have clothing and are in good health, it's enough. But I think it's very easy to get sidetracked by what we see on social media of these perfect personas on Instagram or whatever uh, platform you look at that show these perfect lives. But it's not real, is it? We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, like Apana said, you know, we, that's just a snapshot in time. It's not the full 24 hours. It's not the full seven days a week. So I think that, you know, we have to be really careful on, on, on what we are trying to achieve and what is everything for us. You know, trying to run yourself into the ground to make every day picture perfect. It, it's just not going, it's not sustainable. You might be able to do that for a few months, but you're going to run yourself out and you will not be happy. And guaranteed, if you're not happy, those around you, family, friends, co-workers, whatever, are also not going to be happy because you're not going to be generating positive energy and an inclusive environment. So I think that, you know, we just have to be very careful about what we are looking to do and make sure that we're not setting, like Apana said, like, don't try, don't try and be so perfect that you set yourself up to fail. Yes. I agree with you, Shari. Aparna, any uh, thoughts or comments from you? I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like we all need a strong support system. Looking back to my own family and, you know, let's take a look back to um, our generation, the generations before us. I come from Kerala in India, which generally takes pride in being more progressive when it comes to education, progressive um, women who started working very early in life. So I know my worldview coming from Kerala would be slightly different than the worldview from others who grew up elsewhere. But I come from a family where even my grandmothers were working women with five or seven children. On top of that, they had to take care of the farming and the cattle and the many people who would come to the big large uh, families and so on right but that was the norm like grandmothers were working women so my mom being a working woman was not a surprise at all and she was a teacher she would get transferred to different cities so um five out of seven days of the week she was not even home i was raised by my dad or the maids who stayed over to help other grandmothers um who were at, with us at that point and so on but the point is there was support system for everyone whether it's for my grandmother for my mother or for me, we had strong support system. I had my parents and in-laws take turns for almost two years at the time of both of my ch children's birth. So from their birth until they were two or two and a half, 
I never really had to take much effort in raising the child. And as every new mom knows, that is the hardest period in being a parent. The first two years is the hardest time. For me, I had the luxury to go and do my MBA when I just had a newborn baby because I had parent support. Now, this support system doesn't exist everywhere. That's why I said we all come from a place of high privilege where we have been fortunate to have the permission to do these things. Um, although I don't think we should wait for permission, but at least we didn't have the constraints in doing any of these things. We had the support system. But when we look at our society, there are more women who do not have that support system than those who do. Childcare is very expensive. Our schools and offices and uh, childcare systems are not set up for working women. Even if you look at doctor's appointments, for instance, right? You cannot get a dental appointment out of the nine to five schedule. So what is a parent supposed to do if you have an urgent meeting and you cannot step out of it? How do you go and take your kid for these doc appointments? Every single thing you have to do with the child is in the middle of the day. If you want to take part in your child's activities at school, I recently got an email saying, could you join a Zoom call at 10 a.m. to discuss how to bake cupcakes? Like, uh, no, I cannot do that. But everything is set up for a society where they expect at least one parent, usually the woman, to be at home taking care of the child. And it's fascinating that this happens in 2021. So I, my, my strong desire and wish for our society is to is for some innovation to happen in the area of childcare and support system. You know, the way we have designed childcare, the way we have designed all of the infrastructure around that is not conducive for both parents to be actively contributing to the workforce. And that needs to change. And I'm hopeful that it happens in the coming years. Thank you, Aparna. I mean, beautiful thoughts throughout the discussion. We move from personal stories to probably government policy and how society should uh, be reordered for going in the future. Uh, and I'll just to quickly recap some of the things that resonated with me as we had this discussion. One is definitely about taking self-care and scheduling the priorities in your life so that you are not missing out. You have a time for it and you stick to it. And the second being, how do you set expectations with the ones who are near you so that they know uh, what you're focusing on at the time and they know that, they do, that you, you're doing it for a reason. You will focus on work, you will focus on things at home, you, will, you have your personal interests and they all matter to have a healthy, wholesome life, even for them. And finally, we need to ensure that we are not striving to be perfect. It's all about the balance that we achieve over a period of time. And how do we ensure that we get to that, get to that place uh, as we experiment and figure out what is, what is right for each and every person? Uh, thanks for the lovely thoughts, Shari and Aparna. Really learned a lot, enjoyed having this discussion with you. Um, hope to see you soon and you know, catch up with you sometime soon, possibly in person once the COVID pandemic lifts. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. It was lovely catching up with both of you uh, and look forward to more such conversations in the future. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you.